What up everybody, it's iPad Beat Making here today. Gonna show you a pretty cool little hack in order to get ghost notes, kinda sort of inside of Logic Pro for iPad. Now obviously nothing is coming close to the king of this, which would be FL Studio. And nothing quite has that magic of multi-track studio on iPad and even Adam Piano Roll 2, which can give you that really nice ghost note vibe across most DAWs or mixers such as AUM. Now, unfortunately, Logic Pro for iPad, for whatever reason, does not officially support Atom 2, so it will not show up at all. And if you use Atom, the first one, um, I'm getting a lot of weird notes getting kind of jammed at the beginning, so it's not even worth using for me but I do like to have certain scales be highlighted as I'm working. And I would have liked for Apple to have incorporated this, you know, scale highlighting like you see in like Ableton, but being that this isn't on Logic Pro for desktop, it would make sense that it wouldn't be on Logic Pro for iPad either. However, there is a little bit of a workaround that you can do, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this up front with a full disclaimer. I do not feel that Logic Pro for iPad is the best app to be drawing MIDI in with. I think you can obviously get by with it. And I think as time goes on, if you really learn the app, you can make it work, no doubt about it. Just for me, knowing the tools that I know on iOS, I feel like Atom 2 is better suited for this if you weren't using Logic Pro. And I feel like MTS or Multitrack Studio is better suited for this if you are using a trackpad or mouse and a keyboard with your iPad. Anyways, with all that out the way, let's get started. And credit to Dante Cooper for showing me this really cool hack. So let's go. All right, so the first thing I've got going on here is I've got my scales in slide over mode that I have built. I originally built these for MTS, but now I'm going to drag it in onto this track right here. And I'm not gonna import the tempo. And usually if you don't have a track already, it'll make a track with just the stock instrument patch. And I'm not really too worried about that right now. Now from here, there's a couple things you can do. You can either create a MIDI region from right here and drag it out for four bars and then do like a loop point there, which is just fine. You could work like that. And what you would do then is hit the pencil or you could double tap it, edit, show an editor. And if you scroll back, you will see the notes right here that are the scale. But what I like to do, and probably many of you would like to do as well, is for arrangement purposes, when I'm creating, I don't like these weird numbers. Uh, I'm so familiar with one through five, one through nine, all that kind of stuff when arranging that seeing the six here, you know, there's a chance it might throw me off. So what I would do instead is move this here and then turn on the stretch tool right here to stretch the MIDI and pull that out all the way and I'll go a little bit further than that so that way it definitely stretches the whole way turn the stretch off go back to trim and then bring that back and we should be all good now what I've done is I've set mine up a little differently than you'll see with most um, scale kind of sets with MIDI is I've made my root note longer than all the rest so i kind of know where my one is in the chord at all times and what i will do since i just stretched this midi is pull these back a little bit so that way they're a little bit closer to the rest of the uh, chord data scale data and uh, then i will bring the whole thing over and again, this isn't something you'll usually have to deal with with most chord sets. But for me, I do. I've got it a little bit longer. So now I know where my root note is, as I'm drawing in. And it's very simple. So now that we've got that, we could go ahead and draw a note. And I'm gonna bring this back a little bit. Make sure I tap it. And now it remembers that length. So 
So yeah, that is how you would use these as kind of scale highlighting or ghost loads. And if you wanted them to be like faded, like say you didn't want them to be that bright, you could simply turn the loop on here. And it's gonna be a little bit lighter. And of course you can go ahead here to track and then change it to whatever color you want. If you don't want to deal with that default green, you can go ahead and draw in from there. So pretty useful little hack. Unfortunately, it does not work that I've seen on tracks going um, like top to bottom. So like if we put a track up under here, I have not seen it work where you can highlight them both like you can on Mac and get them both to show up in the piano roll. Like if I was to highlight both of these here, it's usually not going to let me see what's going on in both as I edit one. And that's unfortunate, but that is how Logic for iPad currently is rolling. But I think it is still pretty cool to get some of the ghost note vibes, at least for scales. You can obviously get creative and use this how you want. But yeah, if you're going to be drawing in in Logic, I think this is pretty helpful. And of course, if you did not know, you've also got this panel here where if you highlight the notes, you can go ahead and scale, quantize them like you can on Logic for desktop or for Mac. So got a few options here. I, you know, I'm a little mixed up about this. I think this is super useful to have if you're playing in and you want to just make sure that all your uh, notes you're playing in are within a certain scale. But I do like the visual reference where it's basically like scale highlighting like it is here. For me, it's a lot more helpful. So maybe this will be useful for you. But in any case, let me know what you think of it down below in the comment section. And with all that said, it's iPad beat making. Peace.